Magus is said plays B6. He's obviously not a 3,500 level computer. Perhaps Fabiano should study some more Rook and Pawn endgames rather than just opening. Now the computer wants Black to grab the pawn on G3. As the famous saying goes, greed, for lack of a better word, greed is good. However, after knight g3 and queen h3, you'll notice that white is threatening here to sack the rook for the bishop and the knight, at which point with two b's in return for a rook, white should be winning. And if black goes knight f5, trying to save the horse here in this position, white can probably take. And after takes, you're probably worried that queen takes f5 looks really good for white. But let's not forget here that there is one important distinction between regular chess and Fisher random which is that after black plays rook g7 you're thinking wait my king on f8 is terribly placed but when white plays a move like f4 now you can simply castle the king out of the center of the board and just like that you finish your development you swing the rook double stack on the file and black is already completely fine magus is said plays b6 he's obviously not a 3500 level computer Ooh! and now we get to move f4 from fabiano now when fabiano plays f4 he's trying to argue that down the road he can play e4 in the center of the board nothing really is going on on the king side here and white should have the advantage now the reason i bring that up is magus has moved his knights so many times he's played one two three four five six seven eight times eight of his first 15 moves have been made with the knight and magus is really trying to understand how the knights work in this game so after knight g4 we get queen to f3 from fabiano fabiano obviously has watched his videos on the 31 basic tactics check 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 and he doesn't want to allow knight to f2 forking the queen the rook and the bishop here <laughs> but after king to g8 fabiano inexplicably plays the move rook takes a7 taking the poison pawn and allowing magus to set up the vancouver defense after which fabiano will have zero chances of ever winning the game <laughs> sorry it's okay to me this is just unacceptable as someone who has played chess at the top level to not know this setup it did not seem apparent to me that fabiano realized that this was a, a theoretical draw <laughs> So um, this is not meant really as a slight or anything of that nature, but perhaps Fabiano should study some more Rook and Pawn endgames rather than just openings. Oh, oh, oh. Because he misses a golden opportunity to win this game against Magus and tie the matcher when he takes the pawn. Because now after Rook F5, King C4, King to H8, this is the Vancouver setup here where White is up two pawns, basically the same position except with colors reverse that I had against Nepo. Also, as we saw in the game between Magus and Levon here, and now there's no chance to win. This is a draw, by the way. This is a draw. This is a draw. Oh, come on. This is a draw. So here we get King D4. Magus plays Rook C6. Now the Rook is just Bing chilling on the sixth rank here forever. We get King E4, Rook F6, King E5, Rook C6, King F5, Rook B6, King G5, and now we have Rook C6. Well, actually now, one last point, which I haven't really explained yet in this endgame, which you're probably wondering, is what happens if white goes A7? Now, if white goes A7, the pawn is one row, one rank away from queening. You're pushing the P. You do not check from the side anymore with rook to F7, because when I move my king away, I'm going to check you on the H8 square. I guess king E6 is a forced win here because the rook doesn't have a check anymore. King 6 might allow rook F6 with Vancouver again. Um, and when the rook goes here, then you check, sacking the rook and queening the pawn and winning the game. So when the pawn gets to the seventh rank, now you attack the pawn from behind. Rook still can't ever move without the capture. And when you bring the king close, I just wait. And as soon as the king guards the juicer, I just start checking you forever. If you try to wait right by the pawn, I'm just going to keep checking you until you go away. And as soon as you go away, then I go over attacking the pawn once again. If rook ever moves, you lose the pawn. King comes close. I check. Very basic draw. Is Magnus Carlsen asleep? No, I, I think he's it must be recalling some variation. So Fabiano plays h6, and here Magus plays rook takes h6. Not necessary. You could also just play rook b6 and draw the game. But he takes. We get to move rook to a7. If you play a7 here, again, rook a6 draws. And after rook a7, we get to move king g8. Fabiano plays king c7, and now we get rook f6. Here we have check, king g7, and Fabiano plays the move rook to f8 here, trying to be very funny. Going for the memes, obviously Fabiano's been watching too many Levy videos because he sacks the rook for absolutely nothing. <laughs> now, 
Fabiano could have played king b7 here, but Magnus would again just keep checking the king forever. And as soon as the king goes back far enough, you go back, attack the pawn to draw. So we get rook f8, Magnus plays rook takes rook, we get a7, check, king b6, and Magnus sacks the rook. We get king takes rook on a7, and the game ends peacefully in a draw after 78 moves. <laughs> So what to say about this game? Now, I think in general, this epitomizes why Magnus is the greatest player of all time. What? How? Why? How is he so smart? He was under real pressure out of the opening in this game, but he kept it together. He found some phenomenal moves, finding this whole line with B takes C5 and E5, castling the king, playing knight E4, playing like a stockfish with these absolute best moves was tremendous. Obviously, he missed his chance to go into a Vancouver right away at the start of the Rook and Pawn end game. But nonetheless, when you play these sorts of games against Magus, as they accumulate, you get these advantages, but he defends and makes draws from seemingly impossible situations. It really becomes psychologically difficult because even though the result is relatively okay you know that when magnus gets these advantages against you because he's obviously not always going to be worse he will press you and more often than not because he has such phenomenal technique he will win those games and it really becomes a very tough battle psychologically when like you get these great positions and you can't win but then whenever he gets a great position he always wins it's ridiculous this is ridiculous it's just very tough to deal with. So I think in general, this epitomizes the greatness that is Magnus Carlsen. Um, because he was on, under pressure in this game, but he kept it together, he gets a draw, and he wins the match. Now, from Fabiano's standpoint, this has to be a massive disappointment. Maybe not the fact that he drew the game, um, because you can look at the positive where he was putting pressure, but to allow Magus to get into a theoretical drawn endgame, and at least from my perspective, an endgame that would appear that Fabiano did not actually know this Vancouver endgame. We're simply better at chess than the others, uh, and so we can make... <laughs> Um, it has to be truly disappointing to uh, to end up in this situation in spite of the potential positives because he did have a great chance to win this game. But at the end of the day, he's unable to win the game. We see why Magnus is Magnus, and Magnus does showcase his great power.